A number of recent incidents in this country have highlighted how racial tension or bias even Several of the latest confrontations have involved white citizens calling police on African Americans engaged in typical everyday activities. Including a 12-year-old mowing lawns near Cleveland, Ohio. Two men barbecuing at a public park in Oakland, California. Or this eight-year-old girl selling bottled water without a permit outside the San Francisco Giants ballpark. When I was in the military, yeah, of course, exposure to blacks. When I got out of the military, I almost exclusively hang out with blacks for years. It's not about knowing people, understanding them, having empathy for them. They said West, who had taken his sister to her high school prom earlier that night, was uncooperative. He was later charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. It's literally power. And that's what a lot of you guys, you want to replace this love shit and, and on human rights with your ability to understand, see, decipher power. That's all that matters. All right. So uh, let me ask you a question real quick. Black people in America, what is our position here? And I mean that on the chessboard. Could we be completely annihilated? Our numbers, which are supposedly at 50 million, could it be taken down to 10 million, if not nothing? Could that happen by the powers that be? I mean, most of y'all say, yeah. All right, here's my second question. Would the powers that be take our numbers down to 10, if not zero? Would they? That's the question you got to ask yourself and that a lot of us don't want to ask ourselves. Oh, they would never do that. They would never do that to us. Not our Germans. That's just some people over there. That's just the brown shirts over there. They wouldn't do that to us. We're Americans. I mean, possibly. Possibly. But all of us, we got to deal in what ifs. Are we prepared for that at all? Are we even thinking about that at all? And would they? Let's look at the past a little bit. Let, let, let's look at, let's, let's jump backwards about this would they and why would they. Let's take it back to the 60s. Okay, black America in the 60s was... A phenomenon um, we were a real threat to America to the American interests to the dominant white society's power structure in America and around the globe we had the Black Panthers and uh, several others meeting with America's enemies um, namely the Black Panthers in China we have Malcolm X meeting with uh, Fidel Castro and a lot of them, even Martin Luther King, they made the U.S. look bad around the world. I mean, here's this country that goes around telling people that you're going to have justice and democracy and you're going to treat all your people equally. And it, look at what they're doing. You have second, third class citizens. So they had no room to talk. So they were shamed in the 60s and they were really, really scared. So they had to go into what we call white supremacy 2.0 instead of 1.0 they can't have people just getting hung on trees getting killed they can't have cops blatantly on video well they can't have cops blatantly beating negroes in the street to death um so what they did is they passed the civil rights bill they said they'll give us some leeway we'll act like we're all friends now and we'll move on from this which was a definite mistake on our part we should have asked for something tangible, but that's another story. So what did they do then? What, 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 what did the powers be to do? Let's backwards analyze this thing. Um, first, what they did in the 70s is the divide of the black family. Um, you had the welfare state pop up, which they promised women money and a place to live. 
Um, but the thing was they had to agree to not let a man in the house. And there was varying degrees on it. There was a lot of poverty in the black community, so they had to take it. And it was even agreed on in the family. From what I hear, people's dogs were even on welfare. So it was kind of like a free-for-all, but that divided the family. Now the second punch was, after we divide it, we're going to push it into the culture that we don't need each other. They're going to start the feminism movement. They're going to start a lot of this black pimp movement, uh, just being like a gigolo, making babies everywhere. They're going to start that and divide. Now, next after that, you come in with the drugs and the mass incarceration. That was one of the most despicable things that these people have ever done. They took a bioweapon, crack cocaine, and they dropped it in the black community. And they hurt more than just black people. They hurt Latinos, they hurt even white people. It destroyed the whole country. But that's how much these people in these think tanks in these smoke-filled rooms, as Martin Luther King said it, that's how much they despise us. They drop crack cocaine in our neighborhoods. And you can look that up uh, yourself. The CIA admitted to it. Their reasons can be whatever their reasons are, but they admitted to it. So, the 90s, you come with the mass incarceration. Oh, it's out of control. They're selling this new drug. We gotta stop it. We gotta put them all in jail. That's what they did. Uh, it was a hundred times more if you, whatever you get caught with cocaine, a hundred times more for crack. And they put all the men in jail and said we were left without fathers. And you see our, our culture, our society, us, we're divided and we're fit for the kill. And it's just a, young, a bunch of young men and young m women with uh, no fathers, no guidance, and it's just an absolute disaster. They took out the leadership. Divide the family than decapitate leadership in every house. It was uh, a deafening move. It was absolutely insanity because they hurt themselves to some degree, but it, it was uh, a good move on the part of our enemies because it worked and it destroyed us. So now here we are in the 2020s and we are down bad. We are morally deficient and we need a change in our culture. Um, we have self-hate. If they did decide to stick us on buses, trains, you'd have some black people saying, this is good. This is good. Stick all the black men on, on trains. They would go for it. It's insanity. The young boys every night, they're killing each other. They hate themselves so much that they they shoot each other over nothing because they have self-hatred and there's a lack of manhood and they want to act like men so what do they do they go to the firearm which gives them power and they'll shoot another young black man over absolutely nothing we got a problem with divorces for as little of us that do actually get married 50 percent of them divorce we divorce over nothing we don't even know how to be husbands and wives um it's just an absolute disaster still uh, if you live in a predominantly black area, like I do, there's really nowhere to go shopping. You go to Family Dollar, Dollar General, you go to these places, and it's not real food, it's all preservatives, it's just fake food, everybody's is all obese, it's terrible, it's making us crazy, it's just, ah. Uh. When I lived in Africa, I actually ate real food for the first time. I ate, I went to my, bitcher, my butcher, and I, he chopped the beef, he chopped the goat up right in front of me, and it probably died like a week ago. My vegetables, they just got picked like a week ago. I actually ate real food, no GMOs, no nothing in it. It was like eating food for the first time, it was so good. And then I lost like 20 pounds. Storage for other days, but man, it, it, we're not even eating real food. And they force this culture of stupidity on us. All of our music, which used to be so great in the 70s and before that, it's just, my woman is nothing but a whore with a bunch of holes and the man is nothing nothing but a, a big dumb ape that you should be used for sex and to give you money that's all it is and there is no push for intelligence like in the beginning of rap it's completely destroyed and now in the media they just show us this every night 
black people killing black people, black people killing black people, black people killing black people, black people killing black people. The black man is just a giant King Kong and we need to do something about him. This is absolutely crazy. This is the media. You don't see it, but you gotta look at it. Why do they do this? Just to make us look bad? No. They're setting us up for extinction, for extermination. For if they have to do something seriously, like put us down, like those Jews in Germany in the 1930s, they have a reason to do it. Oh, well, black people are just out of control. That's why we, we have to take them all and round them up and put them in these re-education camps. We are fit for extermination. Um, and why would they do that? Just because they're evil? No, no, no. It's like the man said. It's about power. And black people do not want power. They want freedom. They want peace. They want to... You know, smoke a little drink, smoke a little green, drink a little drink, dance, and lay in the sun. That's all black people really want. They're concerned with power. Ain't no black men nowhere concerned about getting a nuke. None of them. That's not us, that's them. But we need to change that. So something happened recently, though. You know, from 1990 to 2020, it was, it was really bad. We were looking terrible in the media. But when that George Floyd thing happened... It did have something to do with COVID that we're on lockdown and we're already stressed out. But when that George Floyd thing happened, that thing flipped a switch on all of us. And it scared the hell out of us. It one, it made America look bad around the world. And two, it made us fed up. And we went outside and we fucked shit up. I mean, it surprised me. There was riots before Rodney King and that and yada, yada, yada. That George Floyd shit, there was like 8 to 10 cities on fire. Every city in America was on fire. Riots everywhere. And there was white people in there. I went down and watched a riot in the city. And there was white people out there fucking up shit too. See, now that, that's a problem. When you got this other ethnicity, this other so-called race in your mix, in your country. And you have your own people siding with them against the powers that be, against the government, all the way down to the police officers saying, you guys are mistreating these people and it's wrong and we're going to side with them against you. Now, there's some who sided against that and said, hey, we got to shut the blacks down, we got to put it down. But there was some people of, of various races other than black who said, no, this is wrong. Man, they were, they were, they were, they were protesting all around the planet. That was the switch. So something had to be done because, damn it, we got black people looking good and we got America looking bad. We have to do something about that. What do we do? Well, they started another media campaign of black people are killing Asians. So we went from the good guys in 2020 to being mistreated to 2022, 2023. We're the bad guys again. We're killing Asians, which is just crazy. Um, as far as racial violence goes, um, racist attacks, black people are at the top, far above Asians, anyone else, Jews. Black people are at the top. We have the wor worst racism incidents to us than any other people in America. But somehow in the media, it has us looking to be the worst. So what are you going to do, black people? What are, what are we going to do? Can they exterminate us? Yes. Would they exterminate us? Well, they already are. As I said before, I mean, the food, the family, and the fratricide. The young black brothers killing each other. It's a very slow extermination. But could it get sped up? So we had about, what, 20, 30 million abortions? That's way too many. However you feel about abortion, that's way too many. We could use 20 million black people right now. There's about 100, 100 million Hispanics, 130, 150 million white people. We could use 100 million people. We could have used those 20 million people. I understand, but it, it, it's, it's, it's too much. It's a very, very slow genocide. Slow genocide. You don't even see it. You blame yourself for it. Oh, it's black people's fault. That's the reason they're shooting each other. There's a truth to that. But the question is why? How did this all start? Where did it stem from? Because it wasn't like this in the 1950s. We had a higher marriage rate than anyone else in this country. So what happened to us? We dropped our guard on our enemies and they attacked. They are committing genocide on us. It's slow though. 
what are we going to do if it turns up to a fast genocide, to an immediate genocide, to put them all on trains, put them all on buses and send them to camps? Then what? Are you even prepared for that? Do you even think about that is my question. Now, nah, most of y'all don't think about that. That would never happen. That's not going to do that. We got the NAACP. That ain't going to happen. Some old lady said that to me one time. Ah. So let's talk about solutions because that's what we're here for. What's the solution to this? Well, we got a quarantine, uh, we got a removal, and we got to rehabilitate people. When I say quarantine is, you can't be around your friends, you can't live in the ghetto around all this, you can't chill with your ghetto ass friends selling drugs, acting hood ratchet, and then try to go to college and be something. You got to divide yourself from them. That's going to hurt, but... They're going to hate on you when you open up your own business and you go straight. It's, it's, it's a mess. There's a story in uh, Maryland of the lady. She had a hair salon store selling weave. And one of the, some black people came in and shot her in her head. Now you're going to tell me that's going to happen in the Asian if an Asian was selling it? They got that much self-hate and that much to stand for them. You got to put up defenses from other black people and you got to remove yourself from a lot of them. That's a damn shame, but that's the way it is, man. We ain't all in this together. We can't do politics with coons and sellouts. People who come from these coon countries that are that are that are hating on other black people don't want to go. Other black people, black Americans are in the tribalism. We y'all y'all gotta go. It's too serious for that. We're all gonna be put on them trains. All of us. There ain't no ticket to the airport. We gotta start teaching blackness, pro blackness. We gotta get back to that in the early the, the 80s, how we was on that pro blackness movement. We gotta get back to it teaching African history, teaching black history all around the diaspora. We gotta teach that again. We gotta hold on to our culture. We gotta clean it out. We gotta start remaking our music. Not that it's all, we, we, we complain about the music that it's so trash, but are y'all pushing this positive rap? Are y'all pushing pro positive music? Are y'all pushing soul music? How many of y'all listen to jazz? Come on now, how many of y'all listen to blues? Y'all gave up on it. Y'all don't want it no more because white people don't want it, so we don't want it. What the hell is wrong with us? We gotta get back to our culture. We gotta push our own propaganda. And we gotta have a plan B. You need to be out there training black men. You need to be out there training. You need to form your own militia. Just with a couple, a couple of well-to-do brothers out there for you. We need security in the hood. We gotta secure ourselves. We can't be playing around. Because there ain't no what if. It's is. It's just, is it going to go from slow to fast? Prepare yourself. Peace one. Black love.